pull media camera there. So it will be we, interesting to see. We see people standing. See. Okay, Did we want you to him? stand by for the president. People are standing in the crowd because President Trump is going to be making his way to the podium right now. And every phone is clicking, <laughs> taking tons of photographs, running video. There he is, the president of the United States. He's greeting the people behind him, now the crowd. Oh, I love the state of Ohio. What great memories. And we're starting to boom, you know that. It's great to be back in Ohio and be here with the hardworking men and women of Sheffer Corporation. Congratulations. We have a lot of great people with us uh, today. We have our Secretary of the Treasury, Stephen Mnuchin. A man that you know very well and has done an amazing job and a great job in helping us with the massive tax cuts that are helping everybody so much and everyone has fallen in love with it. I tell you, Rob Portman, he knows his stuff. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. A terrific guy, a friend of mine from day one, and he's been behind me from day one, Jim Renacy. Jim, Jim, thank you. Jim has been a great friend of mine. Lieutenant Governor Mary Taylor, Secretary of State John Husted. And another great friend of ours, Brad Wenstrup, couldn't be here. He's Army Reserve duty. That's okay, right? That's a good excuse. That's the only excuse we'd accept. Great guy. I want to thank you all, and I want to thank Jeff Norris and everyone here at Sheffer Corporation for hosting us at this really incredible facility. We just toured it. I love equipment, and I love workers. You have them both, but uh, it's really some wonderful place. I'm here in the beautiful Cincinnati. I'll tell you, you know, I was here. I worked here for a long time. People don't know. Most people don't know. Swifton Village. Long time ago. Really? Ah, oh, you know Swifted. Came here a long time ago. Had a great success with my father. It was a young success. And, you know, if I didn't have a success, maybe I would have gone and just done something else. Who knows? But I spent a lot of time in this state and a lot of time in Cincinnati, and I love it. And what I really want to do and come here and give something very big back, and that's tax cuts. I signed into law. Your paychecks are going way up. Your taxes are going way down. And right now, for the first time in a long time, and you've seen it, factories are coming back. Everything's coming back. They all want to be where the action is. America is once again open for business. Right? We've already created nearly 2.6 million jobs since the election, including more than 200,000 new jobs in manufacturing. We love manufacturing. Those are real jobs, not the other kind where they talk, but there's nothing there. We're bringing back those four magnificent words, made in the USA. We'll count USA as one word. Is that okay? I'm just saying, <laughs> have to think about that one. <laughs> Unemployment claims have hit a 45-year low. Think of that. I mean, just think of that. <laughs> and something that I've been talking about for two years, campaigning, and everyone said, you'll never do it. After years of wage stagnation, wages, so what happened two days ago, and a month ago, wages are now, for the first time in many years, rising. In fact, more companies are pursuing pay increases right now than at any time in the last long period of time. They actually say in the 21st century. Can you imagine that? It's amazing what people with some good ideas can do. It's amazing what we've all done together. This has been an incredible journey, but 
it's happening even faster. And where do you see GDP over the next year or two? Where do you see what happens to our country? Because people can feel it. Billions and billions of dollars are being poured back into the United States. At the center of America's resurgence are the massive tax cuts that we just passed before Christmas. Remember two things. Number one, I said we're going to be saying Christmas again. And number two, I said I was going to give you a Christmas present. And I don't know if you remember, I was going to sign it around January 5th. And then I heard one of the hating groups on television. He promised a Christmas present. Now, here's a thing that hasn't been done in a long time, many years, really never done to this extent. You include Anwar, which is tremendous energy potential. And you include getting rid of our individual mandate, the worst thing there is in Obamacare, which really leads to the repeal of Obamacare. When you look at those things, there hasn't been anything. But I said, I want to give them a great Christmas present. So January 5th, so I heard him saying, he didn't make it with the Christmas present. So I said, you know what? Move that bill up a few days. We'll move it. And it was rather inconvenient for a lot of people. I said, we have to sign it. So we signed it just before Christmas. Better, right? Better. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have been hearing Rob. He did not fulfill his campaign obligation or promise, right? So now they can't say it. Just one more thing we check off the list. But it is the biggest tax cut and reform in American history. And at the heart of our plan is tremendous relief for working families and for small businesses. A typical family of four earning $75,000 will see an income tax cut of more than $2,000 a year, and you're already seeing it, slashing their income tax bill in half. We nearly doubled the standard deduction, meaning the first $24,000 earned by a married couple will be 100% tax-free. Not bad. And we have doubled the child tax credit. That was compliments very much of Ivanka Trump. She would press us, right, Rob? She would press us. Pretty amazing. But we got it done. Not easy. And we had, by the way, we had no Democrats. We had nobody, not one, including your other senator, voted against it. No, he voted against it. I don't care, Republican, Democrat. They voted against it. And if they ever got in, and if they ever took over, your taxes would go way up, and you'd see some bad things happening. So, wouldn't be good. That I can tell you, would not be good. When I signed the tax cuts six weeks ago, it set off a tidal wave of good news that continues to grow every single day. Before the ink was dry, companies were announcing thousands and thousands of new jobs and enormous investments to their workers. Apple announced a $350 billion investment in America. And when I heard it, I said, no, no, they mean $350 million. Because I've been saying to the head of Apple, good guy, Tim Cook, from the beginning, as soon as I first met him, I said, Tim, it's not complete until you start building plants in our great states. Otherwise, when you build them where you're building them, I'm not interested. You got to build them. And believe me, the reason it's happening is because of what we did. But I heard the number. I heard 350. And I figured it was $350 million. That's a big plant. You know, 350 is big. Even for your great company, it's big. So I figured they're going to build a big, beautiful plant someplace. Then they came to me. They said, sir, it's not $350 million. It's $350 billion. Right? That's a big number. I would have been happy with the 350 million, but you know, it's, I like this number slightly better. And uh, they're going to do incredible things. They're going to build plants. They're going to build a tremendous campus. They're going to hire 20,000 people. Uh, Mobile just announced a fantastic $50 billion investment. If you look at that, uh, Exxon Mobil, fantastic. Fiat Chrysler announced 2,500 jobs are coming back to Detroit to Motor City. 25 
2,500. And you know where they're coming from? Mexico. No, think of it. Nothing against Mexico. We are renegotiating NAFTA, I can tell you that. We are renegotiating. I've been telling you that for a long time. I've been, either you renegotiate or you terminate. But we're renegotiating. We'll see what happens. But Chrysler leaving Mexico, coming back to Motor City with a massive plant. I mean, you haven't heard that in how many years would you say, Rob? 30, 25? We're reversing it. And many other companies are coming back, and many other car companies are coming back. And a lot of them, which is of most interest to you, are coming back to Ohio. They're coming back here, right here. And right here in Cincinnati, on this very beautiful factory floor, the Sheffer Corporation announced that every single worker was getting a $1,000 tax cut bonus. You are so generous. Thank you. Congratulations, everybody. That's good. That's good. Hardworking, patriotic Americans like you are what make this country run and run like no other. But we took away all of that pride and all of that incentive, and we were losing so many of our companies, and we were losing so many jobs. And how long have I been talking about this? 10, 15, 20 years. I've been talking, you know, some of you have heard me saying this as a private business person. We're losing all our jobs. We're losing our companies. They're coming back. It's your grit, it's your pride, and your determination to do the job right. It's the foundation of American strength and the key to America's future. But you know, you can work hard, but if you don't have the right leader setting the right tone, in all fairness, I'm not even saying, I am non-braggadocious. But if I don't set a tone like, you're not gonna keep taking our jobs, you're not gonna keep doing what you're doing, and wait till you see what's happening over the next two or three months with what we're doing to countries that have treated us so unfairly. In many cases, so-called friendly countries. I don't call them friendly. I don't call them friendly. But it's all changing. And those companies are coming back. And those jobs are coming back. So you are among more than 3 million Americans who have received a tax cut bonus because of the tax cuts that we just signed into law. Everywhere I go, I love to hear what people plan to do with the money. So I thought we could take a few minutes to hear from some of your coworkers. You know who I'm talking about, right? I assume you like these people. <laughs> I assume it's central casting, right, boss? Tyler Berkshire, you know him? Joined Sheffer Corporation through an apprenticeship. Come on up here, Tyler. Six years ago. And now he is a machinist and a talented one. They like him. Okay. Nice to be loved. It's nice to be loved. I figured it'd only send popular ones up here, you know? The unpopular ones, don't worry, you don't have to worry about. In addition to his $1,000 bonus, his paychecks are bigger because he's paying less taxes. Tyler, you're up here. I'm gonna give you a chance, like maybe 30 seconds or less to explain what you're going to do with all that extra money, in this case, over $1,000. Amen. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And with the tax cut and the bonus, I will be trying to save up money to start a family and eventually get a bigger house. Oh, so, I like that idea. Yep. Mm, That's good. Right. And uh, I appreciate all your hard work that you've been putting in and all your Rob Portman and everybody else. Yeah. So just want to say thank I you. I appreciate it, Tyler. That's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful job. Thank you, Tyler. Beautiful job. Thank you, Tyler. That's a good guy right there, Jim, huh? I think he'll probably be very supportive of you. I think everybody's going to be supportive. We need people that are going to do a great job and keep us in the right direction. 
you know. We need them badly, too. Or it all goes back to where it was and worse. Oh, but did we catch them in the act or what? You know what I'm talking about. Oh, did we catch them in the act? They are very embarrassed. They never thought they were going to get caught. We caught them. Hey, we caught them. Oh, it's so much fun. We're like the great sleuth. Dina Spoletti is also with us. Where's Dina? She joined Sheffer. Come on up, Dina. In 2012, as a customer service rep, and has climbed her way all the way up to become a manager. Dina's looking at a tax cut of $1,500, and that's on top of her $1,000 that Jeff is already giving her. So that's $2,500 plus. What are you going to do with that money, Dina? How are you? I'm good, thank, thank you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for being thank here. You. Thank you, Doug. Um, when they asked me what this would mean to my family, really what it means to my family is the same that it means to all hardworking American families right now who are reaping the benefits of your tax cuts. It means that we'll have more money in the bank, more money to make ends meet. Personally, for my family, my husband Tim and I are in the process of buying a home. And in the fall, both of my kids, Katie and Matthew, will be going to college. So we'll be using that money. That'll be like a bonus we received, thank you, Sheffer, a one-time bonus, but it'll be an ongoing bonus in our paycheck every week, and it'll just help us make ends meet. So thank you wow, very much. Good job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Oh, I'm glad she's not running against you, Jim. That's very good. Thank you very much. She's doing a great job. Very good. Like Tyler and Dina, millions of workers are thrilled to have more money to save for their children's college or to fix their home or put aside money for a rainy day. But believe it or not, Nancy Pelosi and those in Congress who want to raise your taxes, they want to raise your taxes. They don't want to give the money to the military where we need it. You know, without the military, we might not be here or we might not be here for long, believe me. Believe us all, Nancy Pelosi, what she's doing to this country, and she's gone so far left, and Schumer's gone so far left. Oh, I look forward to running against them. We've got to do well in 18, and I know we're going to do great in 20, but I think we're going to do well in 18. I think we're going to do well in 18. I think we're going to do very well. They have gone left. They want to raise your taxes. You know, I figure we're safe. Historically, when you win the presidency, you know the story. Just for whatever reason it is, and I think I figured it out. Nobody really has been able to explain it properly. I think I figured. The party wins the presidency. And now the people are happy, and you see tax cuts in this case, or whatever that party has got. But you see the big tax cuts. You see what we're doing. Jobs are coming back. And the people that voted for us become complacent a little bit. They're happy. And it's only two years between 16 and 20, and so it's two years, so it's a short time. So the people are happy. And they don't get out, and they don't vote like they should. Maybe they go to a movie in 18. None of you are going to a movie, I hope, right? So what happens is they sort of take it for granted. They sit back, and then they get clobbered because the other people are desperate. And they get out, and they have more energy. But I think because of what we've done, because of the tremendous success we've had, I have a feeling that we're going to do incredibly well in 18. And, and I have to say this. History is not on our side, but it's not because of that word. Complacency, you win the presidency, and you take it easy, and then they come and surprise you. In the midterms, they call them the midterms. We've got to get out there and win, or they're going to take, and I say it, a Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, they want to raise your taxes. They don't want to give the money to the military, which we have to, because our military, because of Obama, and even beyond Obama, it's depleted. It's in bad shape. And we're going to build it stronger than it ever was before. We've already started. We've already started. So that's what happened. And that's what happens in midterms. But we're not going to let it happen to us. I mean, it's traditionally, that's what goes on. Oh, I love that person, whoever. Where is 
I love, I knew I liked that man. I saw him standing. Thank you. Well, we're going to be in there fighting because we don't want that tradition to go. We want to have tremendous success. We want to get Jim in and we want to get a lot of other people in, but we have to have tremendous, we have to have tremendous success. And if we don't, we're just foolish. We can't, I know we're going to do great in 20 because by that time, see what happens is if you did badly in 18, now you're all angry again and you're going, well, and now 20 comes along. But we want to do great in 18 and we're going to do really well in 20. That's when we go again and we keep this great journey going, okay? So start thinking about, start thinking about 18, start thinking about November, start finding out exactly that little slot. You're not going to a restaurant, although you could. You could go and vote and go to a restaurant. But uh, that's what happens, and we're not going to let that happen to us. In addition to the bonuses created by our tax cuts, economists estimate that our business tax cut will raise the income of a typical family by an average of $4,000. So Nancy Pelosi again said that's crumbs. Well, she's a rich woman who lives in a big, beautiful house in California who wants to give all of your money away. And she talked about crumbs. And I really think her statement about crumbs, because you're getting thousands and thousands of dollars, and you're getting it every year. So I think her statement, crumbs, will be equivalent. And I said this the other day for the first time. When I first heard the word deplorable, I thought it was a bad thing, but I had no idea it was not going to be good for our opponent. It was not good. Because about two days after she said it, I go to a rally, and everyone's wearing shirts. I am a deplorable. <laughs> We're all deplorables. I said, what's going on with the word deplorable, Rob? You know, we had that, right? It just went pretty wild. It was not a good day for her, and I think this is not a good day for Nancy Pelosi. She's our secret weapon. No, she's our secret. I just hope they don't change her. There are a lot of people that want to run her out. She's, she's really out there. Now I'm supposed to make a deal with her. But you know, the other day, did anybody happen to see the State of the Union address? Right? Okay. So I got good marks. But I said, you have the lowest black unemployment in the history of our country. It was like, it was a game. You know, they play games. They were told, don't even make a facial movement. And I'm talking about, you have the lowest Hispanic unemployment in the history of our country. This isn't me saying, this is the charts, the polls. We have the lowest in the history of our country. Dead silence, not a smile. In fact, there was one guy when I said the lowest African-American unemployment, he was sort of clapping, like, who was that guy? He's a nice guy. I think he was a reverend. And he was, and I wouldn't say it was exactly arousing, but he, he was putting his hands together. And I want to find out who he is. I'm going to send him a letter of thank you. And he was probably severely reprimanded. Don't you think, Rob? I think so. Because he was the only one. So that means they would rather see Trump do badly, okay, than our country do well. That's what it means. It's very selfish. And it got to a point where I really didn't even want to look too much during the speech over to that side. Because honestly, it was bad energy. No, it was bad energy. You're up there. You've got half the room going totally crazy, wild. They loved everything. They want to do something great for our country. And you have the other side, even on positive news, really positive news, like that, they were like death and un-American, un-American. Somebody said treasonous. I mean, yeah, I guess why not? You know. Can we call that treason? Why not? I mean, they certainly didn't seem to love our country very much. But you look at that, and it's, it's really very, very sad. So we have to keep it going, because this country is turning, and it's turning much faster. And I said I'm going to do it. 
but it's happening faster than I thought. And a big part of it is the fact that the companies kicked in, because nobody saw that. AT&T came in, another one came in, another one, Comcast. The, so many companies kicked in, hundreds. Now it's going to be end up being thousands of companies. This company, too. It's a little smaller than AT&T, but we'll take it. <laughs> For the people in this room, it's much more important than AT&T, right? But, but great companies like this, many companies, and, and that's honestly, we said, come February 1st, nobody's going to beat it. Because you're going to get your checks and you're going to see you have more money. Because they're taking a lot less taxes out of your check. And I just don't think that anybody can beat it. And Senator Brown voted against us and fought us like crazy. Okay, just remember that. He voted against you. Just when you go in there, he voted against you. Not good. Not good. So we've gone from being one of the highest tax countries anywhere in the world to being one of the most competitive because when our workers have a level playing field, which they didn't have, they can compete and win against anyone in the world, and that goes for our companies. But we were forcing our companies out. Now we're bringing our companies back in. And if they don't want to come in, that's okay. But they're not going to be so happy, believe me. And I told you that a long time ago. It's not like the old days. And when our workers win, who really wins? Our country wins. Because we're all in this together. We're one team, one people, and one family. And we're saluting one great American flag. And everybody <laughs> stood up yesterday. There was nobody kneeling at the beginning of the Super Bowl. We've made a lot of improvement, haven't we? That's a big improvement. And on top of that, it was a good game. So a lot, of, a lot of good things happened. But there was no kneeling before that Super Bowl. Today, we're thrilled to be joined by several business leaders who understand just how true all of the things that we're saying are. We're also thrilled to have a lot of the fake news media in the back. Those cameras are rolling. <laughs> Hi, folks. That's what's good about doing it live. They can't cut you. You know, when you do a tape, you end up saying, well, wait a minute, what happened to the four sentences that they cut out? Where are those four sentences? That's true. A lot of fake news, but that's okay. Hey, they're doing their thing. Whatever, I don't know what they're thinking, but they're doing their thing. I want to start with a man I watched today on Fox, and he was terrific, Jeff Norris. Jeff, come on up. We know Jeff. So we know every employee has already received a $1,000 bonus, and they've gotten a lot of tax, really lower tax. So they're doing a lot better. But Jeff, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your plans for the future of the company and also what you have in mind for the money, which is going to be a lot that you save on taxes. First of all, uh, welcome everybody here, and uh, it's such a blessing to have you here, uh, President Trump. Um, uh, in all my years, uh, you pray for a president like this that will take care of the working class and businesses, and we finally have one here, and I'll talk about my stuff in a little bit. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we need to make sure that we support President Trump, especially in 2018. And uh, we need to vote out people that are an obstacle to him. In manufacturing, our job is to remove obstacles. This man can remove obstacles, and we need to clear the path for him. <laughs> what we plan on doing with the tax savings and investing uh, in our people, our processes, and our equipment, and uh, continue to try to make America great again, uh, and like you said before, we've got the greatest workforce in the world. We just need a level playing field just a, just a little closer. It doesn't have to be there, just a little closer because our people can do it. And uh, I'm just uh, proud to have you as a, our president, and uh, I wish you the best, and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Trump. Thank you for doing such a good job. I want to thank you for doing such a great job, too. Thank you.
what it's all about. That's true. Greg Carmichael is the CEO of Fifth Third Bank Corp, big bank, which is headquartered right here in Cincinnati. Greg, please step up. Tell us what you're doing with respect to all of those incredible workers. You have 14,000 of your employees, and you're doing something very special for them. So I'd like to hear it. Thank you, Greg. Mr. President, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done for our nation. And we thank you for your efforts and your leadership in bringing tax reform to America. At Fifth Third Bank, we're already feeling the effects of the tax benefit, and we're working to pass those benefits on to our employees. Immediately upon the announcement of the passing of the legislation, Fifth Third Bank announced an investment in our employees that included raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour and providing a $1,000 bonus for over 13,500 of our valuable employees. We're investing, we're investing in our employees because of their contribution they make to our bank, to their families, and the communities in which they serve. Mr. President, thank you for bringing meaningful tax reform and jumpstarting the U.S. economy. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. It's a great bank, too. Thank you very much. That's a lot of employees, 14,000. Big bank, great bank. Matt Schron is general manager at Jergens Incorporated, a manufacturing company founded by his family 75 years ago in Cleveland. You must be very rich. <laughs> Matt, why don't you come on up and tell us about these massive cuts and how they're benefiting your people, your employees, your workers. Thanks, Matt. Mr. Trump, thank you very much for your leadership on this tax reform. I'm, an, I'm honored to be here today representing Juergens in the manufacturing community. Juergens was founded in 1914 during World War II manufacturing airplane seat components. Today, we're a worldwide leader in work holding, fixturing, and especially fasteners. Last year was a record year for Juergens. And thanks to your tax cuts, we see continued success in the future. Juergens is going to be using your tax breaks to invest in our greatest asset, our employees. In April, during our annual performance reviews, we're going to be doubling the annual rate increases that we will be providing our employees. Thank you. In addition, we're going to be using your tax break to invest in capital for our machine shop and, and also research and development for our, for our company, which will help us to hire more people in the future. So, Mr. Trump, your tax break has three benefits. One, more money for our employees. Two, we're going to have more equipment for our facility. And three, we're going to be able to hire more people. Mr. Trump, thank you very much for your leadership in the tax reform. Thank you very much. Great company. Thank you very much. Great job you've done. Finally, Chris Irian is the CEO of eCycle, an environmental services company in Columbus that recycles and resells smartphones. Let's see, you recycle smartphones. Hmm. <laughs> Think about that one. What about when they smash those phones with a hammer? <laughs> can you bring them back to life? Oh, what you would find. Oh, can you imagine that, Rob, what, what we would find? Do most people, when they toss a phone, do they smash them with a hammer? No, not too many. Well, if you could recycle them, I'm with you all the way, Chris. I just saw that. I said, boy, this is exciting. Could be the most exciting part of this visit. Come on up, Chris. I understand that you have a big announcement to make. Let's give us the news. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm pleased to announce that eCycle paid out our largest bonus in company history this past Friday. 100% of all of our hourly and salaried employees participated in this bonus program of over $350,000. 
In addition, due to the greatest tax reform package just passed in U.S. history, we're celebrating with an additional $1,000 tax reform bonus for all of our 55 employees. For all the eCycle team members watching right now, thank you for everything that you do. Thank you again, Mr. President, for believing in the American worker, in the American dream. You just made America great again. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And thank you all for investing in our great American workers and our great American companies. Every job you create makes our country stronger and the future of our country brighter. Jobs are about more than paychecks. Good jobs are the cornerstone of a safe and a strong and a proud America. There is nothing more important than the sense of pride and accomplishment that comes at the end of a hard day's work. And all of us, me, you, all of us in this room, we know that feeling. Just about every day we know that feeling. That's why we want every American to know the dignity of work, the pride of a paycheck, and the satisfaction of the statement, job well done. Creating good jobs is also an important part of fighting the drug epidemic that has affected millions of Americans, bringing new hope to struggling communities. And it's gotten to a point where it's never been worse. People form blue ribbon committees. They do everything they can. And frankly, I have a different take on it. My take is you have to get really, really tough really mean with the drug pushers and the drug dealers. We can do all the blue ribbon committees we want. We have to get a lot tougher than we are. And we have to stop drugs from pouring across our border. Oh, we're building the wall, believe me. We're building the wall. Don't even think about it. Somebody said the other day, well, he really didn't want to build the wall. He was just using that, we're building the wall, or a lot of other things aren't going to happen. And the ones that don't want security at the southern border or any other border are the Democrats. They don't care about the security of our country. They don't care about MS-13 killers pouring into our country. And we bring them out almost as fast as they come in. But nobody was bringing them out before us. And these are killers. But our guys are tougher than them. And that's what we need. Sorry. And our Democrats ought to get smart and they ought to get tough. Or the situation's going to get very bad. But we're going to win. As we speak, our wonderful First Lady is visiting Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center, hearing directly from doctors about their incredible work treating beautiful, precious, little babies who are born addicted to opioids and how government can help them save lives. And actually, Mrs. Portman is with Melania right now. They're together. Your wife, I hear, does an incredible job with the hospital. So thank you, Rob, very much. Appreciate it. America will not overcome this epidemic overnight. But just like Americans always will, I do think we have to change our ways, and we will. But we will prevail. We're going to beat it. We're going to get tough. We're going to get angry. And we're going to win. Our children are being decimated. You know, one drug dealer can kill thousands of people. One drug dealer. If you ever did an average, nobody's ever seen this, you probably never heard this before, but if you ever did an average, a drug dealer will kill thousands of people. And we don't even come down on these people. So it's time to start. And that time is now, right now. Yeah. 
We want every American to live a life of meaning, of purpose, and of joy. And we want every American to have a job they love so they can wake up each morning excited to go to work like all of you people are, right? Yeah. You're excited. You love it. Thinking about, where am I going to put that next big, beautiful machine? One year expensing. You buy the machine now, one year expensing. That will be one of the biggest things, nobody even talks about it, in our tax cut plan, right? The one year expensing. Nobody thought they'd ever see that in this country. And I think that's going to have a great incentive. I think that's going to have a tremendous incentive. They don't talk about that one. And I, you know, people don't talk about that. Most people don't know what it means, but. Some of the people in this room do. It's uh, the one year expensing. You watch. That's going to have a big impact. That's why our tax bill also creates new opportunity zones, rewarding those who invest in distressed communities and create more jobs for those who have too often simply been left behind. Workers will not only make more money because of our tax cuts. Starting this month, you will keep that money in your pocket, in your bank, or you may want to buy something, but you're going to keep the money that you earned. You're going to spend it. The government won't be spending it for you. Something really nice about that. <laughs> Families in the great state of Ohio, remember for two years you heard, Donald Trump has to go through Ohio. I said, I love Ohio. I worked here. I was here. I lived here. I read. It was great. But they said, Donald Trump has to go through Ohio. And did we ever go through Ohio? Right? We went, we went through Ohio. And now it's much better than even Election Day. I saw that. They just showed that to me inside. Much better than even Election Day. And we did well on Election Day. That was about one minute after the polls closed. Donald Trump has won the state of Ohio. That wasn't too close, right? Well, we're doing better now because, you know what? Now we're producing. Before it was talk. See, before it was talk. It was like the State of the Union. They thought I gave a State of the Union last year that was very good. They didn't call it the State of the Union because you weren't there for a year. But it was nevertheless sort of the same thing. They thought it was very good. But they said this one was better because last time was aspirational. I said, we're going to get this, we're going to get that. And we've actually produced much more than I said I was going to produce. When's the last time you heard that? With judges, with the Supreme Court Justice Gorsuch, who's great, with so many different things. And then, of course, topped off by, by the tremendous tax cuts and the individual mandate and all of the different things we've done and were so many different things. So we're real. And, and by the way, the big thing that nobody talks about that you would be talking about, regulation. We've cut regulation. I actually think I'm here to talk about tax cuts, but I, I actually think that cutting regulation has more of an impact or as much. We have cut more regulation in one year than any president has cut in four, eight, or in one case, 16 years. More. And we have a ways to go. We haven't finished. We're probably 47, 48 percent of the way there. We have a ways to go. Some of it's statutory. You can only go so fast. You have to do this and then wait 90 days. Do this and wait 120 days. But all those clocks are ticking. Families in Ohio will see a tax cut of more than $8 billion this year. $8 billion. That's good. That's good. And even more good news, major electric and gas companies are lowering your utility prices and your utility bills because of tax reform, which is a big win not only for families, but a really big win, when you think of it, for the manufacturers, for places like this. The energy costs are going down. Like other countries, they're going up. You know why ours are going down, right? Because I believe in a lot of good, clean, but old-fashioned stuff that really works and really has power behind it. There's never been a better time to hire an American, to invest in America, and to start living the American dream. There's never been a better time than this. Because the future of America doesn't belong 
to the privileged few. It belongs to all of the people. All of those people that I saw for two years now belongs to those people. The forgotten men and women. They worked hard. They paid taxes. They worked hard. They paid taxes. That's what they did. They worked. They worked. They worked. They paid. They paid. They paid. And then they were forgotten by the politicians. You're not forgotten anymore. You're not forgotten anymore. And that's what happened on November 8th. They weren't forgotten. Now the Democrats are trying to figure, let's see. You know, we forgot about those people for about 100 years. How do we get them back into the fold? Not going to be so easy for them, because you're going to remember. It belongs to the hardworking men and women who play by the rules, follow our laws, and give their best, and who never, ever give up. The fact is, the future belongs to you. You are the ones who raise America's great and beautiful families, support America's communities, and uphold our values, our principles, and the American way of life. Workers like you carve the steel into our skyscrapers, and I just got to see a lot of it by great machinists, by great mechanics, by great people. You build the machines that power our cities and teach the next generation of children what it means to be a proud American. You are the ones who are shaping our destiny. You are the ones who are restoring our prosperity. And you are the ones who are making America great again. We love you, Ohio. God bless you. I will see you soon. We'll be back. Jim, get in there and fight. Get in there and fight. We need you. We need you. Rob, thank you very much. Thank everybody. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been watching President Donald Trump speak to